In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grout a shower wall. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is mask around this ceiling. I ran my tile up to the ceiling, but a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will run the tile just right above the shower head and then drywall above to where you don't have to do this. But in my case, I'm gonna have to. So what I'm gonna do is just take my hand masker and just mask off right up to the tile. This hand masker, along with many of the tools you see me using in this video, can be found in my Amazon store. There's a link in the description below, and if you do make a purchase, I earn a small commission, but it's an extra cost to you and help support the channel. Next, I'm going to remove all this tape that I used to install the bull nose, the plastic shims, and also the spacers in the tile. Whenever you install a tile, you're going to get some thin set on the tile. It's just nature of the beast. You're trying to work with the thin set, and it's going to be on your hands, and you're going to touch the tile. So the best thing that I've found is to use a razor blade scraper and just knock the bulk off like so first on each tile. And after you knock the bulk off, you're going to want to clean out all the joints between the tile. You're going to have thin set that pushes up through in a lot of them. And if you watch my video, you can check out the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. But I explained that I usually take a pencil while I'm installing and scrape out the thin set, but in some places you still miss it. So I'm gonna show you the best way that I found to remove it after it's set up. Here's a perfect example of thin set that has pushed through the joint. And you can see the spacers are actually broke off in behind it as well. This one didn't break off too good, but it's still out of the way. So I'm gonna first go over the joint with the razor blade. And we're gonna get bulk off. And then what I'll do is I actually go on the edge of the tile and start cutting into that thin set. So I'll angle it right into it. And then I'll start flattening out the razor blade as I'm going. And after that, I'm going to go up to the next joint that's right, well not the next joint, but I'm going to go up to the other tile and do the same thing. And I'm just going to slowly ease my way into that joint and then just kind of clean up in that joint a little better so something like that and that looks really good and now if we take a rag and just clean that joint really good it's going to be nice and clean so grout will fit down into here without showing any thin set poking through now that i got the thin set cleaned out between the joints and i use my rag to get the tough stuff off what I'm gonna do now is take a sponge and some clean water, and I'm gonna go over each tile with a sponge that's damp just to remove all the dirt because you don't want that mixing in with your grout while you're applying it because it's gonna show up in it and you want a very clean looking grout line. Now it's time to mix up the grout and a little tidbit about grout, they make sanded and non-sanded. Typically the non-sanded is for your mosaic tiles because they're only good for up to an eighth inch. Now this can be up to five eighths of an inch grout joint it can fill in. And also the mosaic that I'm gonna be using is actually rated to use the sanded grout with. So I'm actually gonna use this for the whole project. So I'm gonna show you how to mix it up. In order to mix the grout up, I'm gonna use a half inch drill with a mixing blade on it, a bucket of clean water, a clean bucket, and the actual grout. And again, pick your sanded or non-sanded. And these come in a variety of colors. This one is silver. And I'm gonna just pour about half the bag in here. I'm just guesstimating how much I'll need for this shower. I mixed up about half of the bag and it actually took about exactly that amount to do the whole tiled shower. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of water in it. We definitely don't wanna add more water than we need. And then I'm just going to start mixing it up with my half inch drill. And I'm gonna keep adding water until I have a peanut butter like consistency. After you get it to the consistency you want, mix it up for another two to three minutes. Now I'm gonna let it stand for five total minutes. After it's been setting for five minutes, now I gotta remix it up for one to two more minutes. All right, I'm gonna start at the bottom of the shower and work my way up to the ceiling. 
and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the corners around the shelves and everything as I go and even the mosaic. I do mine a little different than a lot of people. I'll get a good scoop on the end of my float and then I'll actually just go through and push in and wipe just on the grout joint. A lot of people will go through and just smear it all over the tile, but I find it best and less of a mess to just push it in locally into each joint. So I'll just push it in like so, and then I'll scrape to the one angle, then I'll scrape at another angle, and that packs it in tight, and I just keep rolling with it like that and just clean it off as I go. And when you get to a corner like so, I'll just push it in just like I did the regular joint, other than we are going to put it right into the corner. Now I tried to avoid the shower pan because I'm going to go through and do something a little different. I'll show you that after we get done this grouting. Using this method of just putting the grout on the joint and not smearing it all over the tile may take a little bit more time, but I feel like it gets it in the joint better and also it's a little less time in wiping it off the tile after you put it on. When I get up to the mosaic, I do the same thing other than it's harder to hit on an angle, but you just get a good glob of grout and you literally just kind of do the same process other than you're going against mosaic tile now. If this was a mosaic that required non-sanded grout, I would have done that last. So I would have skipped over this mosaic and did the whole shower and then did this at another day. I also like to get the grout in between the bullnose and the drywall. Right here is a good place to fill in with grout. So what I do, I just smear it in like so and then push it back into it. This wall has been painted with a high quality washable paint. So I'm not concerned about getting the grout on the wall because I'm just going to wipe it off. And that's what the next step is going to involve. It didn't take very long to grout this whole shower. It took about 30 minutes or so. But now that it's all grouted, we gotta go through and wipe this haze off. And again, if you had a small project, if it only took five minutes to do, you need to let it set for at least 30 minutes for you to do this step. So as you can see, the grout's still a little damp, but in this case, that's what we want. So what I'm gonna do is take clean water and a clean sponge and wring out your sponge really well because you don't wanna add water to the grout joint because it'll make it look funny. And we don't want that. So we're just gonna get a damp sponge and just wipe it like so. And you wanna to try to wipe in the same direction. You really don't wanna wipe it like this per se. You wanna to try to wipe it off. And then go one direction, maybe go the other. Either way, don't over complicate it, just wipe it off. Because the first wipe down is primarily about getting the excess grout off of the tile itself, and it's not so much about getting the haze off, so I didn't spend too much time in making it super clean, so I only switched the water bucket out once. With the first wipe down, you're going to knock off a lot of that loose grout, and it's going to go down here on the shower pan, and when you also put the grout into the joints, a lot of it falls down on the shower pan as well. So what I do before I wipe this off another time, I'm going to clean up all the grout that I got all over the shower pan. So that way with the next wipe down, it'll be a clean wipe down. Ultimately, I ended up taking that plywood out of the shower pan and gave the shower pan a solid wipe down before moving on to the next step. As you can see, there's a haze on it from the grout. So I switched out to new water, got the sponge nice and clean. So what we're gonna do is go through and wipe it all down another time. As a little tip, after you wipe it down with one side, flip it over and you got a fresh side and you can wipe another run with it. After those two wipe downs, I'm back here the next day. As you can tell, I got a new shirt on, but you can still see a little bit of a haze and it's been a total of about 16, 17 hours since the first application of the grout. So I'm gonna do just one more wipe down before I do the caulking, but as you can see, there's just a little bit left on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down one last time. After this third wipe down, I removed the masking off the ceiling and then any of the grout that might fall off from removing the masking might go in a shower pan. So I thoroughly clean the shower pan and I also remove any other grout I may have missed down along the bottom. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and just take the sponge around it real quick. And now I'm ready to silicone the shower pan. I'm now going to be caulking around the shower pan. And the caulk that I'm going to be using is 100% silicone for tub and tile. 
and it has mold resistant properties to it. So that's why I like to use this. This is the same silicone that I use to make the shelves. You can check out that video on how to tile a shower if you haven't seen it. But I already cut this off and as you can see, it's about an eighth inch hole on the end and I cut it at about a 45 degree angle. And the reason why you wanna do that is because you use this tip to more or less push it into the joint. And in order for me to use this, I just gotta peel out the dried silicone from cutting it open the other day. And aside from the actual tube of silicone, the other things that I bring with me every time I silicone is a damp, white, clean rag. Doesn't have to be a white rag, but this is all they come in for some reason. And then I got a dry, clean rag. And the reason why you have a dry one is to dry off the surface and get any debris out of the way. And then the damp one is just to kind of dampen your finger just to shape the caulking. If you're wondering why I didn't grout around the shower pan, I'm using silicone to begin with. It's because if you put grout in that shower pan, a lot of shower pans have a little bit of flex to them every time you get in and out of the shower. And over time, that's gonna work that grout out of that joint. I've seen it happen before. And I also always put mortar under my shower pans to help avoid any of that flex. But even though you do all that, there's still a smidge of flex to it. So let's get the siliconing this shower pan. First, I'm gonna take my dry rag just to clean out exactly where I'm gonna be caulking. So if it's dry, it also adheres to it better. And now what I'm gonna do is take the pointy end of the cut and place it back right into the corner, then angle my caulk gun just about 45 degree angle as well. And now I'm gonna start putting the silicone in and going slow to make sure that I fill in that crack and the tip of the tube is going to shape that silicone in order to make it look really nice. Now I'm gonna take my damp rag and just wipe it across my finger. It cleans the finger and it also gives it a slight lubricant to go across the silicone without sticking to it. And just real quickly, just kind of push and wipe at the same time. It is nice and clean and you can barely tell it's even caulked with this clear silicone. In order to install the shower valve and shower head, check out this video, it'll help you out.